Hello yogis. Um, I have a really nice, um, almost restorative-ish flow uh, planned for our practice today. Um, not typical restorative when we just kind of pull the posture and relax into it for an extended period of time, but more of a slow nourishing um, flow that allows us to move with our breath and explore postures and the sensations in our body and in our mind. Um, so we'll get started just in a seated position. I'm just going to do a brief guided meditation with a little bit of a different um, breathing exercise today. Um, you will often hear me in class and other teachers in yoga classes referencing our ujjayi breath, which is our ocean sounding breath. Um, so I will take us uh, through that a little bit and give you the opportunity to really cultivate, cultivate that in your practice today. Um, so before we get started, just take your hand and place it in front of your face. <laughs> and Kind of pretend for a moment that you're a little kid fogging up a window pane or a mirror, right? So it's that sensation of, you can close your eyes. And you know when you do that, you'll create some fog on uh, the glass or the mirror or whatever it is that you're working in. So trying it again, you feel that restriction in the back of your throat. So it's a very natural thing for us. Um, we've been doing it since we were little. <laughs> so that sense of restriction and that gentle ocean sound is our ujjayi breath. Um, so just allow yourself to kind of arrive here on your mat. Again, always the option to take this reclined, but ideally today we would be sitting up. Hips may be elevated above the knees a little bit on a blanket, um, a towel or a pillow. And allow the hands to just rest gently on the legs, palms up for receding and palms down for grounding. And gently allow the eyes to close or find a soft gaze out at the horizon. We'll start with three big community cleansing breaths together. Inhaling deeply through the nose and exhaling through the mouth. See if you can bring in that restriction in the back of your throat and already be cultivating your ujjayi breath. Again, inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the mouth. Again, inhaling together deeply. Exhale, ujjayi breath out. And just begin to turn your gaze inward. And do a brief scan of your physical body. Just checking in to see how you are feeling today. Just noticing any tightness or restriction or any sensations of tension or stress. Just making note of judging anything. Begin to turn your attention to your breath and just notice the quality. Notice how the breath feels in the body. The cool air entering through the nostrils. And notice the difference in the breath as it makes its path and exits the body through the nostrils.
and as you continue to inhale gently through the nose and release your exhale also through the nostrils. And on the exhale, can you begin to find that restriction in the back of the throat that creates your ocean sounding breath without the use of your mouth? It might be helpful to take a few rounds, really making it audible um, before you settle into a more quiet um, practice. Inhaling through the nose and ocean breath out through the nose. If this is causing any feelings of anxiety, you're welcome to experiment with your eyes open or just return to your natural breath or your dirga three-part breath that we typically practice. Just a few more rounds here on your own. Slowly, gently allowing your breath to return to its natural rhythms. And just noticing how you feel. Noticing if that pranayama brought up any feelings inside of your body. And just note what they were. You don't have to judge it. Just acknowledge those feelings and release them. And allowing the eyes to begin to drift open, taking in the space around you, taking in the light, the feeling of the floor beneath your body. Allowing the hands to just drift down by the sides. Take a moment to change the cross of your legs. Just have the other shin in front. And tenting down into the fingers, really sitting up nice and tall, rooting down into the sitting bones, finding length in the spine. Growing tall through the crown. Allowing the shoulders to descend away from the ears. And then inhale, sweeping the arms up overhead, palms touch. And exhale, hands through heart center. Do that three more times. You can close your eyes if that's more comfortable. Just moving with your breath. Inhale, sweeping the arms up, getting long in the side body. You turn the gaze up towards the palms. And exhale, hands through heart center. Perhaps you're bringing your ujjayi breath back in. Inhale, sweeping the arms up high, reaching for the sky. And exhale, hands through heart center. release the hands down by the sides. Now if you have um, a blanket underneath your hips, you're welcome to keep it here. And then begin by extending one leg out long and then the other leg out long. If you don't have anything under your hips, that's fine too. 
either way, we're going to reach back and just kind of move the fleshy part of our glute up and kind of pull it back. And then to the other side, same thing. And as you do that, kind of find a natural tilt in the pelvis. So you might want to have a gentle bend or even a generous bend in the knees. Um, depends on the length of your hamstrings and um, the sensation you're looking for. Should have absolutely no um, discomfort in the lower back here. So a lot of the hands, again, to come rest by the sides, tenting down into the fingertips. Taking note of the feet. So even with the bend in your knees, we want the toes dialing back towards the face. So we're in a very strong flex position in the feet here. Almost like you are standing um, on your feet, even though your legs are extended out in front of you. Inhaling up nice and tall, pressing down into the fingertips. This is our Dandasana, our staff pose. And then inhaling, sweeping the arms up overhead. Again, allowing the shoulders to not hike up by the ears, but descend down the back. Finding length in the spine. Active all the way up through the fingertips. Elongating all the way up through the crown. Dandasana. And from here, we're going to begin to slowly hinge forward at the hip joints. So keeping the arms in line with the ears for now. We're not rounding the spine, we're moving nice and slow here. It might actually cause the knees to bend a little bit more and that's fine. And I personally have very short hamstrings. And as you find your edge here, and just notice if you're beginning to slouch, can you still just really root down through the sits bones and elongate through the spine? And then as you exhale, allowing the hands to come down, finding the ankles or the toes or all the way around the feet, depending on the length of your hamstrings. Um, if you need even more length, um, you could have a block behind your feet. Again, keeping mindfully the toes dialed back here. And as you exhale, completely beginning to fold over those legs, coming into your seated forward bend. You might start at the ankles and then experiment after a few breaths with finding the toes or the backs of the feet. Again, this is should be a stretch in the back of your hamstring. So you can experiment with the extension of the legs out, but you don't want compression in the lower back here. So listen to your body, be mindful of what's happening and how you can achieve the sensation in the target area, which is the back of the legs. And then bowing the head, finding your ujjayi breath for a few rounds here. Enjoying these few moments of quiet as you bow your head towards your legs. And then slowly releasing the feet, ankles, or block, letting the arms extend back out. Make a reverse hinge, coming back up to our Dandasana, our staff pose. Again, you might notice that the back of your legs are a little more open now, um, hopefully. <laughs> so you might not need that big generous bend in your knees, but the toes are still very actively dialing back towards the face. Inhaling up nice and tall, letting the shoulders descend down the back. Exhale, allowing the hands to come down to the earth, tinting into the fingers, sitting up nice and tall. And then letting the knees bend, kind of bring the palms to the mat so the fingertips are dialed towards the heels. You can step the feet wide and you can actually remove your blanket if you don't want it there right now. Um, so feet step wide towards the edges of the mat, hands are flat, um, fingertips dial back towards the heels, 
and just start to find some windshield wipering of the legs. Side to side, allowing the left knee to drop to the earth and the inside of the right knee. Inhaling through center, and as you exhale, dropping to the other side. A little bit of a bend in the elbows here. Just close your eyes and move with your own breath. Notice the sensation in the back of the legs, the inner thighs, the hip flexors. Not rushing, just moving with your body's breath. And the next time the feet drop to, the legs drop to the left, we're gonna let them stay there. We're going to walk the hands in and find a pinwheel shape in our legs. So the sole of the left foot meets the right thigh and the right leg is bent at about a 90 degree angle here. So not having the foot really completely flexed, it's also not pointed. It's in kind of a softer position um, to help protect the knee. Um, so from here, I'm going to rotate the torso so it is directly over the left thigh. And tenting those fingertips again, sitting up nice and tall. And then slowly, like little suction cups, walking those fingertips out. And you're going to spread them a little bit wider than um, shoulder width. And as we exhale, we're going to bend into the elbows, leading with the chin, allow the head to bow down over the knee, and then inhaling, rising back up. So you don't want the right hip to be completely lifted. So just make sure it will be lifted a bit up off the mat, but you don't want to be kind of like hunched over. So find where your hands are going to be and we'll move through a few rounds of these dolphin dives, moving with our breath. So inhaling up nice and tall, and exhale, bending down. Just moving with your breath. Just imagining that your dolphin's swimming through the water. What a natural place for your ocean-sounding breath your ujjayi breath to be. Just two more rounds. And rising back up, we're going to walk those fingertips in a little bit closer to the body. And we're going to begin to rotate a bit further. So you're walking the fingertips, the left hand kind of back behind the left uh, glute. So again, this rotation is coming from the midsection. Um, you don't need to be coming all the way up off of this right hip, although there is space between the earth and the hip. And then walk that left hand out and lay it flat on the mat. So a couple of hand lengths um, in line with the hip. And then bringing the right hand over to meet it, inhale, sweep the right arm up and open. So reaching back behind that right foot and exhale, just sweep it down. Again, inhale, sweep it up and open. Maybe the head drops back, opening through the heart center and exhale, sweep it back. One more like this, inhale, sweep it up open and exhale back around. Now this time um, we'll have the option to press the hips up as you inhale up off the mat coming up on the knees and um, shins. So inhale pressing the hips up feeling that stretch through the belly and the heart center finding a gentle back bend here and exhale sweeping back so those are your options. You can stay seated or join me with the pressing up. Inhale, pressing up to open, almost like a half wild thing here. 
and exhale, scoop it down. Two more, inhale, open, feel the opening through the chest, the throat chakra, the belly, the pelvis, all of it. Exhale down, one more, inhale up, and exhale back down. And then we'll just find our way back. So our sits bones are rooted back on the mat, feet are open wide, fingertips dial towards the heels, and find those windshield wipering legs again. Perhaps your Ujjayi breath. And the next time your knees fall to the right, we'll find those pinwheel legs on the right side. So I'll turn a little bit, so I'm not completely out of your view. Drawing the sole of the right foot against the left thigh. Just want that left leg bent at about a 90 degree angle. And the softness through the foot, but not pointed toe. Enough of a flexion in the ankle to protect the knee. Then begin to rotate through the midsection, bringing the torso to align over the right hip. So you're really directly over that right thigh. Tenting into the fingertips, inhale, sitting up nice and tall. And then exhale, walking the fingertips out in front, preparing for the dolphin dives on this side. So inhaling up tall, and then exhale, bending into the arms, leading with the chin, diving the crown down. Inhale, sweep it back up. Opportunity to just note where uh, a comfortable position is for these dolphin dives for you. Sweeping down. Inhale, up and tall. Maybe finding that Ujjayi breath. Three rounds on your own, like a dolphin swimming in the ocean. All you can hear is the sound of your own heartbeat, your breath, and the lapping of the water around you. And then walking those fingertips in closer to the body and continuing to rotate the torso around to the right side. I'm gonna plant that right hand on the floor in line with the right hip and bringing the left arm as close as you can over to the right and inhale, sweeping it open, reaching back and exhale to sweep it closed. Gaze can follow the hand One more like this, and then we'll begin to lift the hips, if that's accessible to you and interesting to you. So inhale, pressing into the hand, pressing the pelvis up, all the way from the earth, opening through the belly, the hip flexors, the heart center, the throat. And exhale, sweeping it back down. Maybe closing the eyes. And moving through three rounds with your own breath. As big as you want. Explore the sensation. Maybe try to go even more open than you think you can. Respecting what's coming up in your body. And after you finish your third, you know, find your way back to our seat. Feet spread wide and just take a couple more windshield wipers with your legs to release. And then we're going to meet in our tabletop position. We'll start to just move through some cat cow. So knees are about hip width distance apart, hands are about shoulder width distance neutral in the spine. And then as you inhale, belly drops, tail and crown 
rise up, opening through the heart center. Exhale, pressing the earth away, letting the crown point down towards the mat, belly button draws up through spine, chin tucks towards chest. Coming into our cat, inhale, belly drops, finding our cow. Exhale, pressing the earth away, finding our cat. And you can just close into your eyes and move through a couple of rounds here, linking your own breath to movement. Just listen to what's happening in your body. Always an invitation to hold one posture longer or add any additional movements that your body is craving. Also an option to have the toes tucked during this. So just find what works for you and move through a couple of rounds. And then pausing in neutral table, we will now tuck the toes under and just hover the knees up off the mat by a couple of inches. Engaging the spine here already, I'm sorry, engaging the core, drawing the belly button up through the spine, up towards the spine. So waking up those hamstrings, waking up the quads, shoulders. And then as you're ready, straightening into those legs any amount, sending the hips up to the sky, finding downward facing dog. And you can begin to walk your dog, bending from one knee into the other. Finding length through the back body, lightness through the front body. You might have a bend in the knees, heels are reaching down towards the earth. You don't necessarily have to be on the earth. We're not dumping our weight into the mat here. We're really pushing away from the mat to find length. And give yourself a few moments here longer. Shake the head, yes, yes, yes. No, 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 open and close the jaw. And then gliding forward into our high plank pose. See if you can stay here for a couple of breaths, tucking the tail under, zipping up the core, puffing across the upper back. Always an option to bring the knees down and they will be down momentarily. Just see if you can stay here nice and strong. And then allowing the knees to come down. And from here, I'm gonna glide the shoulders forward just a little bit, hugging the elbows in, we're lowering down to the mat, leading with the chest and then the chin. We're pausing here. This is our eight-pointed pose. So we have eight points of contact here. And then on your next inhale, we're going to begin to elongate and slither forward. So the pelvis comes down to the earth, pressing down into the tops of the feet. Bring the heels of the hands back by the rib cage if they're a little forward here. You should have kind of landed in the right position, but always an option to check in. And then inhale, begin to press in the hands, peeling the chest up off the mat, finding low cobra. Actually, I'm in kind of a high cobra, but. And exhale, loading back down, pressing back through table, Sending the hips back, finding child's pose. As you know, child's pose, our balasana is a place of rest. It's a place you are welcome to be, to take at any time during your practice. But I say you could actually spend your whole practice in child's pose and enjoy all the benefits. So anytime you need a break, you can come back here. And from child's pose, we're gonna walk our way forward into our tabletop, tucking the toes under and sending the hips back. 
finding downward facing dog. Finding your ujjayi breath. Inhale, gliding forward, allowing the knees to come down and toes to untuck, hugging the elbows in, leading chest and chin, eight point pose. Inhale, slithering forward, rise up, low cobra. Exhale, it back down, pressing back, child's pose. Inhale, back up, table, tucking the toes, sending the hips back, downward facing dog. Always have the opportunity to reset your position here before we move through that flow again. Finding length through the back body. Inhale, gliding forward into plank. And knees come down, hugging elbows in. Lower chest and chin, eight-pointed pose. Inhale, sliding forward, slithering like a snake. Inhale, rise up, cobra. Those shoulders are descending back down the body, away from the ears. Exhale, back down. Pressing back, child's pose. Take three rounds of breath here in child's pose. Um, option to draw the hands back behind you or flip the palms over to release the wrists. Whatever you need. Take a few moments before we start to build a little bit of heat anyway. <laughs> and when you're ready, we'll meet in downward facing dog. Stepping the feet closer together than hip width distance. We're gonna inhale the right leg up to sky into our three-legged dog. And exhale, draw the knee through. Step it to land between the palms. You know, you have the option to bring the knee down here, or you can keep the knee lifted. And we're going to rise up into our crescent lunge. So if knee down, we're gonna rise up into a modified crescent lunge, knee up, get those feet so you're on um, train tracks, so they're not on a balance beam. Inhale, rise up, find your crescent lunge. Always to find a deeper opening, you can gaze up towards the ceiling. Can you bend down into that right knee to about a 90 degree angle? Still see the toes, don't let it cave in, hugging everything in through the midline. Exhale, framing the front foot. Step back, high plank. Now from here, option to move through the knee down, um, chest, chin, cobra variation. Or you can stay here in high plank, glide forward, lower halfway, chaturanga. Press up, upward facing dog. And then press back. Downward facing dog. So those will be your options for our flow whenever I cue your vinyasa. You take what feels right for you. And the next round we'll add a little bit more in. Inhaling left leg up. Exhale, step it through. Always the option to have the knee down. Inhale, rise up. Crescent lunge. Can gaze up for a wider, deeper, bigger opening. Exhale, hands to heart center. And hinging forward, coming down to frame the front foot. Step back, high plank, and move through your variation of vinyasa. Just two rounds of breath here. Reconnect with that ocean sounding breath, with your ujjayi breath. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, step it through. Set up your foundation. Rise up, crescent lunge. 
Palms exhale through heart center, hinging forward, framing the front foot, step back and move through your vinyasa, chaturanga or cobra. Finding that ujjayi breath, inhale left leg up, exhale step it through, rise up, crescent lunge, palms together, exhale to heart center, and drink forward, framing the front foot, step back and move through your vinyasa. And we'll meet in downward facing dog. Shake it out. <laughs> Find your breath. If you need a break in child's pose, you're always welcome to take balasana. And then stepping those feet closer together. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, step it through. This time we're setting our feet up for warrior two. So you want to seal the back edge of your left foot down on the mat. We're going to heel to arch alignment here. And then when you have your foundation, rise up, find your warrior two, your Virabhadrasana warrior pose. So shoulders descend away from the ears, arms are at about shoulder height, gazing out over the front fingertips. Can you imagine there's a beach ball between your legs here and that you're squeezing into that beach ball to pull yourself out of your joints. That right knee is bent at about a 90 degree angle. Back heel, if you need to readjust, it's about a 45 degree angle um, headed out and your toes are angled in. Flipping the front palm, reach back, reverse your warrior. Find that opening through the side body. Find your Ujjayi breath. Inhale back into warrior two. And then cartwheeling the hands down, frame the front foot, step back, and option to move through a vinyasa. Hmm. Noticing what felt different in that variation of our warrior posture. Did you feel strong and powerful? You're already looking forward to taking it on the left side. If you are, here we go. <laughs> Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, step it through. Setting the feet up, getting your foundation ready. Inhale, rise up, warrior two. Now settle in, we're only taking this once on each side, so make it nice and strong. Again, can you engage in those muscles while still bending a little bit deeper into the knee? Find that shoulders descending down the back. Perhaps closing into the eyes. And feel the strength in your Virabhadrasana. Flipping the front palm, reach back, reverse your warrior. Feel it opening through the side body. Inhale, cartwheeling the hands down, frame the front foot, step back. And this is the option to move through your final vinyasa. Maybe try something different this time. And wherever you are, We'll just take a couple of breaths in downward facing dog. Bending into the knees, gaze forward, step to the top of the mat. Keep the feet at about hip width distance and release down into your forward fold. Generous bend in the knees. Notice it feels different for you in this standing forward bend versus our seated forward bend at the beginning of practice. 
for me, I actually get more opening through the standing variation. That might be true for you, but you might also have the opposite sensation. So again, always have the feeling of the upper body being like a waterfall over the lower body. You could find red doll arms here, maybe some swaying side to side. Or just release and let everything just flow down towards the earth. And then inhale to extend and half lift. What length through the spine, finding that L shape. And exhale to fold. And bending into the knees just a little bit, root to rise, get those feet so they're rooted down into the mat. Inhale, sweeping the arms up, palms touch. And exhale, hands through heart center. Pausing here, finding our Tadasana. Notice your heartbeat. Notice the feeling of your breastbone beneath your thumbs. Notice the alignment in your body. Pressing down into all four corners of the feet yet pulling up through the arches to find length, pulling up above the kneecaps to find length. Thinking of that imaginary string from the tail of the spine all the way up through the crown of the head. Find length, find lightness, find stillness. Allowing the hands to drift down by the sides and just for a moment, really actively pressing through the fingers, energetically opening the palm. And then allowing the eyes to come open. We're gonna move into a little bit of balancing. Um, so we're gonna step the feet um, uh, so like the toe ball mounds are touching, but there's some space between the heels. I'm going to find lightness. Okay, so you're going to find some lightness in the right side. So find a bend in the right knee. Bring the hands to the hips. I'm just going to move into our tree variations. So from here, you can kick stand out the right toes. So you find heel and ankle connection and really root down through the standing foot. Think about it truly like a tree growing down into the earth. And you can bring your hands to heart center and be here in sapling. And if you're looking for a little deeper experience here, you can bring the foot up to the calf or reach down and bring the foot to the inner thigh coming into your full tree. Depends on where you are today, what yoga pants you have on, all the things. So really actively <laughs> pressing the foot into the thigh and then the thigh into the foot, pressing that knee back in space. And can you drop that hip just a little so it's not hiked up? Welcome to keep your hands at heart center or grow your tree tall. If you want an extra challenge, you can try closing your eyes. <laughs> and if you can stay with me here, bringing the hands to heart center, instead of releasing the foot down, can you release the grasp on the leg and draw the knee out in front of you? So, right knee is about in line with your hip. Now you have the option to just stay here. And if you want to take it a little bit further with me into our warrior three, I'm going to begin to hinge forward, 
and draw that left, uh, that right leg back behind you. I'm going to hit the wall, so I'm going to step forward. And coming into our warrior three. So can you drop that right hip just a little bit? Really strong through the back of the leg. Foot is really flexed, almost like you're stepping into that imaginary wall behind you. Welcome to stay here at heart center. Ooh. <laughs> or play with your arms. You can fly them back or forward. Or just stay wherever you are. And then beginning to reverse hinge, drawing that knee back up into that 90 degree angle and exhale it back down and just shake the feet out and then we'll move to the other side. So hands can come to the hips, find that lightness in the left side of the body, rooting down through the right side. Kickstand the right foot out, find that heel to ankle alignment and bring the hands to heart center and find sapling. Pausing here in sapling. Already, can you drop that left hip just a little bit? And then again, staying here or finding your full expression of tree, whatever that may be today, whatever that may be on the side. So pressing actively foot into thigh, thigh into foot, pressing that right. Sorry, that left knee back in space to find opening through the hips. And then maybe growing your tree, maybe closing your eyes. I'm not gonna do that because I'm gonna fall. <laughs> Making sure those shoulders aren't like hiked up by the ears. Maybe you're a tree in the wind. And if you fall out of this, that's okay. It's just an edge that you found and then you make your way back in to wherever you are and you don't judge it. And it's probably different on the side, just the way our bodies are. And then drawing the hands back down through heart center, releasing the foot, but drawing the knee out in front of the body. So we're at that knee hip height here, already be engaged through the stand at uh, that um, left foot. And then I invite you to either stay here or move with me into our warrior three and begin hinging forward and extending, oh boy, extending that right, maybe I'll just turn, extending that leg back behind you. And find any arm variation that suits you but try not to open through the hips. Those hips are closed off and pointing down towards the earth. And then coming back up, bringing the knee back up to hip height and exhale, letting it come to rest. So just step the feet wide. We'll just take a, a couple rounds of empty coat sleeves here. So find some softness in the knees. Just rotating through the midsection. Let it all go. Close the eyes. And don't stop short, just slow it down. And just close the eyes and find this wide stepped Tadasana and notice how you feel. We're gonna make our way down to the mat. So however you wanna get down there, we'll come to rest on our backs. We're gonna have the feet Planted on the mat, knees bent. Hips, uh, feet are about hip width distance apart here. Letting the palms come to rest on the floor next to the hips. 
And then on an inhale, I'm just gonna gently begin to peel the hips up off the floor and send the pelvis up towards the ceiling. Can you find some rooting down through the feet without clenching the glutes, sending that pelvis up higher? If it helps, you're also welcome to bend into the arms and press the backs of the upper arms into the mat and have that 90 degree angle um, and the elbows and the fingers extending up towards the ceiling. And then slowly one vertebrae at a time, allow the hips to come back down to the mat. I'm gonna bring the right foot to the left thigh, just below, above the knee. And just find some opening here. Make sure you're not rocking off to one side or the other yet. We want the sacrum really on the earth here. Now you're welcome to stay here in this uh, figure four shape. Just find a reclined pigeon. You can left, let that left foot come off the mat and interlace the hands behind the thigh or behind the shin, Woo. <laughs> depending on how much opening you're looking for here. So wherever you are, stay somewhat actively flexed through the feet but not pointing the toes. Uh, somewhere in between. <laughs> and with each inhale and exhale, can you draw the legs closer to the body? Also, not pulling those shoulders up, letting them descend back down towards the earth. And close your eyes and just release into this reclined pigeon. And releasing the interlace of the fingers, we're going to keep the legs in the figure four shape. So if you have the feet both down, if you have the foot down the mat, can you bring it up? And then we're going to start to draw the right foot across the body and come into a twist. So that right foot lands on the floor. You need to readjust your shoulders. You don't want one up off of the mat. You want them both kind of just nestled down here. And then you can extend the arms. Find softness through the left foot. And your gaze can fall to either side or straight up, depending on the amount of opening you're looking for. So for a deeper opening, the gaze would fall over the, to the right side. Let the belly be soft. Let the body be slowing down. Bring the breath settle. Notice if you're holding on to any residual tension, can you let that go? Can you just soften into this twist? And when you're ready, drawing the knees back up through center and allowing the right foot to come rest on the mat and bringing the left ankle to the right thigh. So again, finding your figure four shape, you can bring the arms back down and if you enjoy that sensation of using the hand to help open through the hip and press that right, I'm sorry, that left leg away from the body while it's trying to actively draw itself in. I like to keep my um, right hand on my hips, just remind me to balance off my sacrum here. And then lifting the right foot up off the earth, staying either here or finding the interlace that suits you on the side. 
Again, option to be all the way around the shin. Just listen to your body. And again, it might be different on the side. And with each exhale, can you draw those legs closer to the body? Respect whatever, whatever might be coming up in your hips from this reclined pigeon shape. And just find some softness. And then releasing the interlace, um, keeping the feet off of the earth. Start to draw the left foot across the body until it comes to rest on the floor. And again, need to readjust the shoulders so they both nestle down into the earth. And we're finding this twist from our midsection here. Allow the gaze to settle. And close the eyes and just release into this twist. There's no work to be done here. It's just time to release and find softness. And when you're ready, drawing those knees back through center, unhooking the left foot from the knee, letting it come to rest on the mat, and drawing the soles of the feet together, and allow the knees to splay open wide, finding our Sutta Baddha Konasana for a couple of breaths here. While we're here, and usually I like to keep my hands on the front of my hips, I'm going to invite you to bring the palms to the mat, the floor, and pressing down into the palms, opening them against the floor. If you've been practicing with me, this is going to start to become a familiar feeling, a familiar cue. Um, we're not using our forearms or our shoulders here. Um, we're just allowing the energy in our hands to spread wide and open them against the earth, releasing any trembling. Our hands have this tendency to be like this. We're on our phones, we're typing on our computers, holding a remote, whatever it may be, clenching our fists. Can you release the tension in your palm? Don't fight the trembling. Notice it. Understand it. Be kind to it. And eventually it will settle. Just two more rounds of breath here before we move to our final resting posture. And releasing the palms, you can use the hands to just gently draw the knees back together. And extend the right leg out long and the left leg out long. I like to use the back of my heels to just find some length in the back of the legs and then allowing the feet to just splay open wide. Arms extend down by the side, palms up. Finding our corpse pose. Releasing everything. Allowing the earth to completely support you. Shavasana.
You're welcome to stay in Javasana for as long as you like. Peace is not something you wish for. It's something you make, something you do, something you are, and something that you give away. The light in me recognizes the beautiful shining light filled with peace in each and every one of you. Namaste.